All right, so I've got a new one here. Uh, this is a little damsel pattern that I've been playing with and uh, um, kind of gone about it a little different than, than what is typical. And uh, I'm going to show you how to tie this. So this is a damsel adult. And I've got this, I'm going to tie this on a size 12 Daiichi 1640, um, which is a ring eye short shank hook, like so. And I'm going to start with some uh, black 14 knot Vivas. So I'm going to start this thread just here behind the eye. Um, and, and one of the ideas when I was playing with this fly um, is I wanted a little bit sparser um, damselfly pattern. And so rather than use the uh, uh, commercially made uh, damsel adult body, which is a braided mono, um, I wanted something that I could make even skinnier. And uh, as you know, I, I really like to use this uh, polypropylene macrame yarn because it's so buoyant. So um, what I've got here is some light blue and some darker blue. Um, I think navy blue and light blue. Um, and I'm going to take just, let me get these cut square so you can see them, um, just a few fibers, you know, 10 or 12 fibers of each. Um, and I'm going to put them together. And I've got a, a length that's at least twice the length of the body I want to make. And what I'll do here is I'm going to take and furl this. So I'm going to twist the ends opposite directions. And I'll try to do this up where you can see it. And get an idea of what's about to happen there. So I'm just rolling one end fairly tightly. The tighter you can get it, the better. And then I'll loop it over. And if you push your scissors up to the end, you can control where that twist comes from. Um, and that is about what we're shooting for. So what we've got is a really thin little body um, that's got some color variegation to it, just like the real thing. Now, um, damsels are, are smaller than most of the patterns we fish for them, so um, kind of keep that in mind. You want uh, that body is, uh, oh, I'm going to say an inch and a half long, maybe an inch and a quarter. But I'm going to tie that down by the loose end. So I've got my furled body sticking out here on the back end, and then I can just come in and trim that yarn off the front. And I'll bind that down nice and smooth. Then I've got a uh, piece of two millimeter foam here that I've cut about one millimeter wide, so fairly thin. Um, and I'm going to back my thread up here a bit, and I'm going to catch this and wrap over it right up to the base of the of the abdomen section. This is going to be our uh, our wing case, as as it were. Um, it's also going to be our parachute post. Um, now for the hackle, you can use conventional grizzly hackle, um, no problem at all on this fly. The catch that you're going to run into is finding a nice wide um, feather that has got fibers long enough to make those big long wings. Um, those wings are almost as long as the body. Um, you can see these fibers extend all the way back. And what I've used on this one um, is Cocteau de Leon saddle. Um, and uh, this is sort of all the rage lately for your Pertagon tails, um, but here's an actual use where you can use it as hackle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select out a feather here, um, and you don't need a very long one. You don't need a lot of uh, length because we're not going to make a lot of turns. Um, but what you do want is a, fire, a feather that's got uh, fairly long, fairly long barbs, and and generally speaking, these are very stiff. Um, gosh, that one's too long. I should have picked this out before you guys got here. Um, but at any rate, here, here we go. Here's a nice one. Something like so. You can see that's nicely modeled. Uh, it's got a little furnace in the center, a uh, little furnace stripe there, not a big deal. Um, that's not hardly going to show. But I'm going to strip that off and leave a little bare stem. And I'm going to tie this in on my near side, right up to the base of the foam. Now I'm going to take this feather. And I'm going to start to wrap it around the base of this foam post. And very often when you wrap this, you're going to kind of crawl just a little bit up this post. Um, but you can see that post is rotating. Um, don't sweat that too much. I'm going to make four or five turns here. And I'll bring the tip of the feather back toward me. Uh, make sure I've let go of anything that doesn't need to be held down. And then I'll sweep that hackle back and just catch that tip. You can do that with a pinch wrap right there at the base of the post. And then if you grab that tip and kind of guard that hackle back, you can come in and trim just the tip of that feather out. So you can see we've got hackle that's as long as the body, maybe even slightly longer. we got a nice big one there. So I'm going to take a little bit of uh, blue Superfine to finish this off. 
uh, for the thorax. This is a, a simple, quick little fly. Um, and the, the theme on this one is to keep this fly skinny and sparse. Um, so not a lot of dubbing needed here. So I'm going to twist that dubbing onto my thread, and then I'll sweep this hackle back again, just sweep it back out of the way. And I'm going to dub from just behind my index point, so about an eye length back from the hook eye, up to the base of the wing, and then forward again, so that I end with bare thread just up at that index point. Now I can take this strip of foam and sort of flatten it back down again, kind of twist it back where it came from, and I try to part the hackle on the front end. Let me get this parted and I'll turn it so you can see it. So that I've got a clear spot to tie off that foam. I'm going to sweep all that back. Ooh, missed one there. And I'll tie that foam down behind the eye with just a couple tight turns there. I'll lift that foam up and just make a few turns for a thread head. This is really just to elevate that foam off the hook eye. And then I'm going to come in and whip finish. Just lift that foam out of the way. You want to be careful not to catch your hackle. And you can trim that piece of foam off fairly flush. I like to leave that little nub just so it doesn't slide back through. Um, and then you can sort of preen your hackle. Um, that one came out pretty clean. If you've got anything sticking down, trim that off. But you can see um, that CDL hackle with that modeling in it, that fine speckling, um, is just a great imitation of those long, wispy damsel wings. And it creates a huge amount of surface area. Um, this is a gigantically oversized parachute. A huge amount of surface area. So this fly sits flat on the water, but gives us a really nice silhouette. You can see that body, if I set that at just the right angle, um, that body still shows it's nice and skinny, like the real critter. Um, you could come in with a black marker and bar this if you wanted, but I don't find that that's important. Those bars are just on top. Um, it's one of the few times I'll say that you don't need to use the marker, um, but gosh, you, maybe you could. Um, I've got a couple crazy ones up here I'm going to get out of there. But that's our kind of new version of the old school parachute damsel. Not bad. Not bad. Um, cheap, quick, and easy, and stuff you probably already have. If you don't, uh, charlieslybox.com has all of that. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven. You guys take care.